Dogs. Why? That is the subject of our program. And I hope you'll stay tuned as we delve into the mystifying and somewhat inexplicable behavior of the species known as dogs, or more formally, Canis lupus familiaris, or as I like to call them, mutton heads. To understand dogs, we must retrace their history to have a better understanding of what made them what they are today. Slobbering flea hotels to drink out of toilets. Most scientists believe that dogs are directly descended from the gray wolf. The gray wolf was both a hunter and a hunted. Wolves travel in packs and use a loud and annoying howl to communicate. A uh, wolf's howl can be heard up to 10 miles, and their breath can be smelled up to 17 miles. It is difficult to say exactly how the first wolf was tamed, paving the way to the present day domesticated dog. Oh yes, charming, aren't they? Moving on. Early cavemen used dogs to help them hunt. Dogs had an acute sense of smell, and they could pick up scents that the cavemen could not. dogs were quite helpful to early man. He must have been searching for some reason for a dog to exist. This next evolution in dogdom, or as I like to say, dumb dogdom, introduced us to the working dog. dog was a dog that was good at hurting, hauling, and pulling. <laughs> Obviously, man had his work cut out for him in trying to turn the working dog into something of value? That's right, boy. In fact, I believe you were bred to be a working dog, specifically a paperweight or a doorstop or a big stone. Oh. Good boy. For a brief time, dogs became slightly more sophisticated as lords and ladies of the manor hoping to find a purpose for the dog, use their beast for sport. Madrusa, is that a covey of pheasants in the distance? 
Well, I do believe you are right, Nigel, old boy. Uh, shall we point the way? Indeed, let's. Tea. Somehow, between then and now, dogs became very, very stupid. How, how stupid are they? I thought you'd never ask. I'll show you how stupid. May we have a well-respected scientist, please? That's good afternoon, or oh, good evening. I have no idea what time it is, but I am here to test the intelligence of your average dog. But first, as a comparison, I shall test a non-dog animal. Might I have a volunteer? Here's your volunteer. Check my smarts, Professor. Ah, yes, very good. We shall check the brain power of this pussycat. <laughs> now, according to this, the cat is as smart as a rocket scientist, a brilliant surgeon, a great philosopher. How about the guy who invented microwave lasagna? Now, I am to test a dog. But where will I find a dog to test? Un momento, scientist type. Here, this is a dog. I know that because I'm incredibly smart. Stay. Now I shall measure the power of his brain. Any second now. It is here somewhere, and it's a... Uh... Ah! There it is! No, that's a pimple. Mm. Oh, okay. Here, maybe this will help. According to this, the dog is as smart as a, a common house plant, an amoeba, a medium-sized container of potato salad. Oh, don't take it so hard, Odie. Potato salad's very popular. Nice work, Professor. Glad to be of service, Garfield. Sometime this century, people got the notion that dogs were fashionable. <clears throat> They even carried dogs around like they were accessories. Well, I guess if you can't find anything useful to do with a dog, you might as well dress it up and take it out. Uh, check that. I guess you can dress a dog up, but apparently you cannot take them out. And we're clear. Nice job, Garfield. Let's take five. Whoa, hold the phone. I didn't write the history of dogs. I'm just narrating it. I know, boy. I'd be embarrassed, too. I think you need a little fresh air. Dogs. Can't live with them. Can't live with them. is on fire. <laughs> what? 
And you say the dogs saved you and your pizza parlor? That's right. The dogs, the save Vero, Vero's building, Vero's pizza. They are heroes. They wake me up, they put out fire. All these dogs, these brilliant, brave dogs, they save Vero, they get free pizza for life. You gotta be kidding me. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, and cats, and dogs, during the course of filming The History of Dogs, an unusual thing happened. Witness. <laughs> Therefore, I must conclude that while dogs do love to drink at a toilet, sniff each other, slobber, drool, and... I must also admit that throughout history, dogs have exhibited some admirable traits. They have keen sight and smell. They're strong. They are intelligent. And they are loyal and brave. In conclusion, let's just say that dogs are not worthless beads of sweat. That they might actually have some value. That they might, in fact, be man's best friend. And cut. That's a wrap, people. So, how was that? Oh, and uh, did I mention that they are a cat's best friend as well? 